Regardless of the dimension in which you think you exist, you can thank Rene Descartes for coming up with a way to represent it. Up to this point, we have been talking about unordered sets. So I would have a set 1, 5, 6, 2, and that's actually equal to the set 1, 2, 5, 6. The elements, all the elements that are in this set are also contained in this set. Some applications, however, require an ordering of the elements within that set. When we order the elements inside of a set, we're going to refer to this as an ordered collection. And basically what we have is an ordered collection of n elements. And in fact, whenever we talked about sets, we talked about how the set 2 comma 2 is actually equal to the set 2, right? Every element that is in this set is also in this set. Whenever we're talking about an ordered collection, however, this is not going to be the case. If I have two elements that repeat themselves in a specific order in this collection, that is part of the characteristic that defines this collection. So this ordered collection of n elements, we are going to call an n tuple. All right. Now, you're already familiar with a two tuple, right? So a two tuple. Another word for this is called an ordered pair. And you've used them for a very long time. Think about the xy plane. So we have this, this plane, this two-dimensional plane, and we've got points that are on this plane. And you have been describing them for quite some time using an x comma y notation, right? And so this point right here might be 5 comma 2. It is over 5 and up 2, right? And this is a different point than 2 comma 5. 2 comma 5 would be right there, right? So that one is 2 comma 5. And so you're familiar with this idea of an order pair. Now, whenever we talk about this idea of equality inside of a pair or inside of an ordered n tuple, so equality in n tuples, Basically, what we're saying is two n-tuples are equal. And let's just go ahead and I probably should have, have written this down a little bit differently. Let's just say that I've got an n-tuple a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way up to a sub n. So there are n elements is equal to b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3, all the way up to b sub m, if and only if, and this is going to be abbreviated with IFF, if and only if a sub k is equal to b sub k for k equal to 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n, right? Whoops, not a zero. Sorry, I didn't start at zero. I'm too used to my computing background thinking that all computers start counting at zero. What we've got is for k equal one, two, three, all the way up to m. You switch any two elements, you don't have equality. If those two elements are different, for example, if a2 is a five and a3 is a two, you swap them, suddenly you don't have equality anymore. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about how this applies to computing. Um, whenever you're talking about an XY plane, you know, computers use XY planes all the time. Think about the display itself. If I've got a 1920 by 1080 display, right? A monitor that has a matrix of 1,920 uh, 1, pixels in this direction and 1,080 pixels in the y direction. And the way it's laid out, typically, not all machines do this, but a lot of the time, this point right here is 0, 0. This point right here would be 1920, 
1080. And if you needed to display a small pop-up window somewhere and you decided you needed to put it at a particular coordinate in this window, you accidentally flipped that ordered pair, it's going to show up somewhere else. But actually, there are many, many ways of using ordered and tuples inside of the computer. For example, there is a very common three tuple that is used to represent 24 bit color. And there are a number of ways that are used to do this, but making sure that you get your order proper, properly set and get the values set correctly, that is important to making sure you display the color that you want. For example, uh, let's see, if I've got RGB, which means that what I've got is a three tuple, a value of red, a value of green, and a value of blue. And each one of these values is going to be from zero, well, we'll just say where red and green and blue are between inclusive zero and 255. All right, so our values of red, green, and blue all lie in that range. They can be zero up to 255. Another way of representing this, saying greater than or equal to, is just simply put a square bracket, zero comma 255, a square closing bracket. All right, for example, I may have two different colors. If I simply swap the elements that are in that sequence. For example, I may have the color 2175630. So 217 for red, 56 for green, 30 for blue. Well, this is equal to a color we call vermilion, all right? If I have accidentally swapped a couple of these values and instead display 56, 217, 30, just simply swapping those two shouldn't make a difference, right? Now we get lime green, a much different color, all right? So why exactly are we discussing these ordered tuples? Well, one of the reasons is, is we we want to see whenever we have one set and another set how those sets relate to one another and we usually start off with something called the cartesian product well, what does the cartesian product equal well a cartesian product and this name cartesian comes from rene descartes is the set of all ordered pairs A and B such that A is in a set A and B is contained in the set B, capital B. Now the Cartesian product of two sets A and B is represented with A cross B. And so A cross B is equal to A comma B where or such that A is in A and B is contained in B. All right. Now, it's important to understand that the Cartesian product is not commutative. In other words, you can't, you can't just simply say A cross B is equal to B cross A like you would be able to say in, in multiplication. For example, if I have a set A and it contains 1 comma 2, and I have a set B and it contains C, D, E, well, then A cross B would equal... Well, what we have to do is we need to take one and make a pair with C and then one and make an ordered pair with D and one and make an ordered pair with E. So you get one comma C, one comma D, one comma E. Now that we've paired one with everything that's in B, now let's pair two. So you have two comma C, two comma D, and two comma E. 
and there is our Cartesian product. If I swapped B and A in the cross product, I would get a very different set of ordered pairs. I would get C comma 1, C comma 2, and then D comma 1, D comma 2, and then E comma 1, and E comma 2. That would be my ordered pair. Very different, right? So they're not equal to one another. Now, how do we compute the size or the cardinality of our cross product? Well, the cardinality of the cross product is based on the cardinality of the two sets that we are make, taking the cross product of. For example, in this situation right here, the cardinality of A is 2. So there are two elements I can pick from. The cardinality of B, I have three elements that I can pick from. So one of the elements in A is paired with all three. That gives you three ordered pairs. I then move on to the second element of A, pair it with each of the three elements of B. That gives me three more ordered pairs. So what we've got for the cardinality of the cross product is the cardinality of the first set times the cardinality of the second set. So the cardinality of A cross B is equal to the cardinality of A, and I'm going to put an asterisk there, the computing way of representing multiplication, the cardinality of A times the cardinality of B. All right. Turns out you can also do things like take the cross product of two of the same set. So I could do, in fact, something like this. I could say A is equal to 1, 2, then the cross product of A with itself is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 2. Now, what was the cardinality of A? The cardinality was 2. What's the cardinality of A cross A? 2 times 2, 4. We could also do A cross A cross A. So I could actually take multiple cross products, in which case what I'm going to get in the, in, for this is a 3 tuple. And I get 1 comma 1 comma 1, right? And then 1 comma 1 comma 2, and then 1 comma 2 comma 1, and then 1 comma 2 comma 2. All right, we're moving forward. And then 2 comma 1 comma 1. 2, 1, 2. 2, 2, 1. And 2, 2, 2. All right. Now, what's the cardinality of this set? 2 times 2 times 2. The cardinality of A being 2. So it's 2 times 2 times 2. That should give us eight, 8 elements in that cross product. Let me erase this board. I'll show you one more example. Let's say that I am a manufacturer of shirts, all right? And what I want to do is I want to figure out all the combinations of shirt sizes and shirt colors that I can make for a particular style, okay? So I have one set, S, which is going to be the sizes that are available for our shirt. So I can say small, medium, large, all right? Yes, I realize there are more sizes than that, but let's keep it simple so I have room on the board to do this. And let's say that I have another set called colors, all right? And colors might be, I don't know, how about black, uh, red, green, blue, and white. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to figure out first of all what how many different what different combinations of these shirts I can come up with. So, small is is paired with black, red, green, blue, white, and then medium and so forth. Now, how many elements are we looking at? Well, I've got 3 elements for my size. I've got 5 elements for my colors. That's 15 different elements. So what we're looking at is S cross C is going to be equal to, well, let's just, first of all, I've got a uh, small. How many times is small going to be paired? It's going to be paired five times. So I'm going to get it with black, with red, with green, with blue, and with white. 
Now we move on to medium, which is going to get paired with black, uh, red, green, blue, and white. And last of all, we have large with red, uh, well, I forgot black, didn't I? Black, green, blue, and large with white. Did I get all my ordered pairs there? Well, I've got three by five rows. Yeah, 15. Looks good. Now, if you're following along with this material because you're interested in computer science, more than likely you are going to take a course or follow some lessons in Database. And Database does a lot of this idea of a cross-join or a Cartesian product. And the idea is that I have one set a table that would consist of something like sizes, dimensions, things like that. How do we make the different sizes? And then maybe another set or table that define the type of material we would use to make this particular shirt. You can do a cross product to figure out all the ways that we can make that shirt. But we can also apply conditions, things that will will limit the number of responses or number of ordered pairs that we get back from our called a query. We'll figure out a little bit later how to reduce that set so it gives us exactly what we're looking for.